Welcome to the PC Perspective Mailbag. Today is episode number 49, recorded for June 22nd, 2018. I'm Josh Walrath, and I will be hosting this episode. Ryan has gone to do some basketball thingy. Um, Alan, well, we'll get to him later in the mailbag. But I'm left here, lonely old me. Just did Twitch and did podcast and wrote up a little thing on Brian... Sandwich. It's been a busy day. Oh, and I also took my kids to the dentist. <sighs> They're going to hate themselves later on in life when they realize how poorly they took care of your teeth. So, brush and floss, kids. Anyway, this is the show where we take your questions, whether emailed or listed uh, in, in YouTube comments or... On the website, under the message pages, uh, message boards for this episode, we will be answering for the next. We'll take the best questions out there, if you have any. So, uh, we'll get started right now. Western Gents United asks, is Thunderbolt 3 built into any CPU or chipset yet? I heard talk of this a long time ago, but have heard nothing since. If not, does that mean every laptop or motherboard that has Thunderbolt 3 has a dedicated chip for it? You are correct in that, well, I guess you were answering a question, asking, uh, no, no chipset or CPU has Thunderbolt 3 integrated in it as far as I know. I don't know if there are any plans to do so. Intel is keeping things rather close to this chest, and uh, even though it's supposed to be a specification that is a little bit more open than it is now, um, you know, there's hints of it going kind of free but it's never really come about so Intel has made about 10 different controllers throughout the lifetime of Thunderbolt from Thunderbolt 1 until right now with Thunderbolt 3 yes it is a third party controller well it's Intel controller uh, but it is a separate chip it goes really fast you can address a lot of PCIe lanes um, but yeah, you're out of luck if you wish it to be on a chipset. So any laptop that will feature a Thunderbolt port, it's gonna have a third. Uh, it's gonna have a separate controller in there, which will take up its own power, and I would imagine a fairly significant chunk. I'm not talking like 15 or anything like 15 watts, but I would guess three to five watt TDP would be uh, around the uh, the envelope that uh, we're seeing with this kind of speed. Uh, with Thunderbolt 3, which, you know, isn't a huge amount, but when you're talking about a mobile part in a mobile chassis with a CPU that has a TDP of 15 to 25 watts, that's a fairly significant chunk of power and uh, heat production that uh, that you're adding into the, uh, the environment. So, um, we don't know any other plans at the moment with Thunderbolt. Who knows how it's going to fare in light of the latest USB-C versions out there. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. And somewhere in the background, my dogs are barking. Luckily, I have children here who are checking things out. If you hear gunshots, I guess I gotta go. Anyway, Stuart Craig asks, Will the new Threadrippers require new motherboards? Will it still be X399, and why are Intel's X299 boards and CPUs so expensive by comparison? Um, the assumption right now is the new Threadripper will in fact sit in the TR4 socket, uh, which is what is currently available. AMD has, does a pretty good job in making sure that uh, each socket will last several generations of CPUs. That way their, their OEM partners are, are happier uh, they don't make consumers as mad, too, and, and those who actually shop retail and, and upgrade their own products. Uh, Intel is not doing that at all, and it's rather unfortunate, but it's what it is. Uh, X39, yeah, I think that's going to be the basic chipset for it. I've heard rumors of a 499, but I believe that one of those was, was canceled. We'll see if they need anything more. Uh, the 399 is, is still a, a solid, solid chipset. And plus, you've got all of those stinking PCIe lanes coming off Threadripper. And so you can work around a lot of issues there just because you got so many damn 
PCIe lanes. Why are Intel's X299 boards and CPUs so expensive by comparison? Well, that's that's kind of Intel. They charge more for their CPUs. They charge more for their chipsets for these. Um, and because of the prices are so much higher on these things, the board prices themselves typically are, are ramped up to kind of match expectations of, of the top end Intel parts, especially when you're looking at a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks uh, for those higher end CPUs. So AMD's got, you know, a, a nice advantage in terms of price on both motherboards and processors, and they hope to, you know, continue to do that and take up more space in the high-end desktop marketplace. <laughs> Rave OK. Why are graphics card power connectors on the front windows facing side instead of on the right intake side? Same with the ATX 24 pin power power connectors on motherboards. If these connectors were better placed, it would make cable management so much easier. There are products like the EVGA power link, but these shouldn't be necessary. Why? I think primarily it is motherboard spacing and um, tolerances. So around uh, PCIe Express uh, slots, around memory slots, around the CPU, they have certain tolerances that they need to um, have so that cards and whatnot can, can fit in there without issue, cooling fans. All of these are, are specifications done by, you know, Intel, um, AMD, the motherboard manufacturers, the graphics card people, and so yeah, it's it's easier to kind of route things around. If you think about where the power and data are coming from the the PCI Express slot, and then how power is distributed around the graphics card, it probably makes routing that a little easier if you keep the other power cables up and away from the uh, the motherboard, the PEG slot, the you know the 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 PCI Express connector on the graphics card. Um, I imagine if you put a little downward, it could affect that a little bit. But I think you're mainly now looking for tolerances and around the PE the the the, the PCI Express slot as you're plugging these cards into. Uh, yeah, it would make it a little bit nicer. But I don't think anybody's going to change that anytime soon. So it's nice that EVGA has the product that they do. But I think that there's just enough issues with uh, spacing and trying to keep areas around, you know, capacitors and, and uh, motherboard components a little bit cleaner that uh, they, they keep those cables a little bit more out of the way. So I don't think you're going to see a change of that anytime soon. Clear as mud. <sighs> Shrouded Wolf 51. I added an RX Vega 64 to my Windows 8.1 system, but found that AMD only offers Windows 7 and Windows 10 drivers. The Win 10 drivers don't work at all, and the most recent Win 7 drivers are unreliable. AMD tells me that there's something unique to Win 8 that is incompatible with their current drivers, but they wouldn't elaborate. Do you have any idea what this could be? Oh. What is uh, the WMA versions? I think it was, uh, oh gosh, dang it, Windows, WDDM. Gosh, dang, you know, I should probably research these things before I go. But anyway, there's, there's specifications. Uh, one of the first specifications for this, this, this driver model, I think it's WDM, Windows driver model, uh, was Windows 7. And Windows 8 had a totally new one. And Windows 10 has a totally different one than that. And I think that AMD is just looking at market share. Now, Windows 7 had a huge amount of market share. Even when Windows 8 came out in 8.1, people really didn't like Windows 8. And so it never gained a whole lot of market share. And, and Microsoft, you know, as fast as they could, they got out Windows 10. And a lot of people who were running Windows 8 got a free upgrade to Windows 10 were pretty happy about it. And so I think AMD... They do not have the resources in terms of money and software development to handle everything that is currently out there. And so they've kind of had to pick and choose their battles. And I think Windows 8, Windows 8.1 were two of those battles that they thought to uh, to avoid altogether and uh, just stop development on the drivers there. 
kind of makes sense for them because there's just not that many. I mean, you're kind of in a minority there, in a very small minority, because while Windows 8.1 was, was a decent operating system and it had some interesting ideas to it, just was not that popular. People were hoping to have, you know, a menu that pops up when you hit the Windows key instead of more tablet-type oriented... Uh, I can't remember the, the specific name of uh, the tiles and whatnot that, that Windows 8 had. But, uh, you know, I never even installed Windows 8 on my main machine. I kept it at Windows 7, and I went straight to Windows 10. And I think a lot of people are probably like that. And, uh, you know, sorry that you got skipped over. But you can always buy NVIDIA. I think they still develop drivers for it. Anyhow, Sam Biscuits. I bought several new motherboards that have USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel connector, but I can't find any cases that can actually use it. I've seen some people hacking a Gen 2 port on their case, but it is is this just something that hasn't gained market acceptance? You know, I have not seen very many motherboards um, retail-wise that handle USB 3.1 Gen 2. Um, you know, we, we see plenty of, of Gen 1 with the regular blue ports and, and, and that, but um, I have hardly seen any. In fact, I've seen hardly any uh, of the add-in boards that, uh, you know, should kind of be bundled with motherboards, like the old USB 2.0 ports that uh, you get in your motherboard box and just plug it in. It would be nice if we had such a thing, uh, but we don't. So I think we're just kind of out of luck until maybe, I don't know, six, seven months, then we start getting new products out that hopefully they will start integrating that functionality. But for now, it does not seem like it is a, uh, a big push for the case guys because they're just, you know, except for a lot of the cutting edge motherboards that are currently out there, um, there just are hardly any of the USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel connectors. I guess you got lucky with the ones you found. We'll see. Raven Ridge MIA and my my allergies are killing me. My allergies are killing me is, is not a person asking this question. Z, the Zotac Z-Box MA5551 with Raven Ridge desktop APU options are still MIA. So what's up with that? It's been almost six months and no sign of any Zotac Raven Ridge options or Raven Ridge mini desktops in general. It's very fishy for a product announced that long ago. That's another really good question. Um, we, it could be a couple of reasons. It could be allocation of Ryzen parts. I don't think that that is likely. I think AMD is making plenty of them to spread around. Um, it's still a very new architecture uh, with Raven Ridge. Um, it's a neat architecture. I like what they've done with the place. Um, but it's just been... Well, it's just been kind of hard for them to get it through. I, I don't know if we expect to see some in the back-to-school season. We would hope so. But I haven't heard any rumors uh, from any of the... Uh, you know, any, any of the people working around the industry as to why these things aren't showing up. I mean, I guess we could probably go back and think that you know, Carrizo, uh, AMD's previous, um, you know, excavator last generation um, uh, integrated part, they uh, they were solid and, you know, they're energy efficient and they're relatively fast, especially as compared to, you know, previous iterations. They had good graphics capabilities and you would have thought that they would have been a, a slam dunk for AMD and they just weren't, and so maybe Raven Ridge is just focused on regular do-it-yourself desktops and some OEM stuff, and the small form factor, well, you know, it, it could very well be that the design that Zotac had for the MA551 just is not up to snuff in, in dissipating the amount of power, that uh, amount of heat that, that the Raven Ridge chips do, even though they're 65 and, and 95 watt parts um it's still you know it could be running a little bit hotter than they expected but again i haven't heard any rumors uh, these is all speculation on my part and uh yeah i'm, I'm interested to see where they are as well because raven ridge is it's a really good design tj throwaway asks what model of think pads do you use on the studio table during the podcast 
I, I, I don't know. So I'll pass this on. Maybe next week, Ryan can go ahead and answer that one. But right now, he's, he's not anywhere near a camera. Well, maybe a TV camera somewhere. But anyhow, Z Kid 1070. <laughs> Where is Alan? I don't understand 80% of what he says, but he's great to listen to. Well, Alan, a couple of weeks ago, said, Hey guys, I'm going to Europe. We're like, Really? When? Uh, like two weeks. For how long? I don't know. A month? Haha. <laughs> So Alan's in Europe. He is touring around with his wife. They've they've gone to uh, Germany. Uh, he actually took a couple of runs around the Nurburgring. Pretty exciting. Uh, he's now in Italy. They're visiting like Ferrari Land and looking at all kinds of churches. His wife is uh, an archivist historian. So it's all very very exciting for the both of them. They're doing well. They communicate with us quite often. And Alan shows pictures of food that he is eating over there. And he's he's a right bastard for it all. But anyway, this has kind of been a shorter one. We didn't have as many questions. Uh, probably Ryan had a little bit more information on Thunderbolt than I did. He would have talked more, but uh, not me. I'm not a talker. Okay, that's a lie. In front of a camera, I just can't stop. But anyway... That is the piece of her mailbag. Again, sorry it's so short at 17 and a half minutes or so, but uh, we'll do better next time. Maybe get a few more questions. Maybe talk about Brian Krasnich, or however you pronounce his name. Crazy stuff. It's a crazy world we live in. Somebody ought to sell tickets. I'd buy one. Have a good day. Mm-hmm.